So we were discussing process synchronization. in which uh, first problem was producer consumer problem in producer consumer problem uh, we have seen that uh, we have two concurrent processes one is producer and one is consumer so what happened in producer consumer problem a producer produce uh, a producer process produce information that is consumed by a consumer process Right, and for example, kya tha? Uh, for example, a compiler may produce assembly code that is consumed by the assembler, right? As we understand that a compiler uh, take your high level language and convert it into assembly language. And then we have assembler which take your assembly language as an input and convert it into your machine language, or we can say object file that will be converted by the assembler. And that can be used by the loader. So what happened in producer consumer? A producer can produce one item while the consumer is consuming another item. And they can do this concurrently. Now what happened in producer consumer problem that we have to take care that the consumer who wants to consume the items uh, can consume only when there is an item in the mem memory. So the producer and consumer must be synchronized so that the consumer does not try to consume an item that has not yet been produced. So this thing we have to take care in this producer consumer problem. So let's see what is the solution of this producer consumer problem. Uh, first solution we are having in which we use the shared memory area. We are using a buffer which can be used by producer also and the consumer also. In buffer, producer will going to put uh, its item after producing and the consumer will uh, look at the buffer area that if there is an item it can consume from there. So to allow producer and consumer process to run concurrently, we must have available a buffer of items that can be filled by the producer and emptied by the consumer. This buffer will reside in a region of memory that is shared by the producer and consumer processes. Uh, if uh, we are having a shared memory area, that only we can uh, find out if the, that uh, buffer is empty so that the producer can produce more items and if uh, there are items in the buffer area, in the shared memory area that consumer can consume the items. So let's see how this um, real life thing can be implemented in a virtual scenario. And that is through programming. So let's see. Uh, we have seen this code of producer. Uh, what it is saying that uh, suppose you forgot the other things. Firstly, discuss this. If you are going to produce one item, suppose this is a circular queue. Uh, you have produced one item and put it into the your queue that is buffer in. Uh, let me have uh, paint so that I can explain here with the help of this. Okay, so let's see. If you want to put an element in a circular key, how will you use? Suppose uh, we are having this um, buffer queue and uh, firstly, let's see, n is the counter with the value zero, right? n is a counter value uh, which is zero and buffer size, let's take um, buffer size equal to three, right? Buffer size is three, right? And then uh, if you want to produce an item and put it into the queue, then buffer you will put in you will put in and place your item and which is written here as next produced, okay? So item is put it into the buffer queue and then you have to increase your counter. So how will you increase your counter? Uh, as in circular queue, I hope that you have find out that how we put elements in a circular queue and how we delete elements from a circular queue. So here, let's see, in is initially zero, right? So zero plus one and then you have to take the remainder right and then buffer size is three so what will be the answer zero plus one that is one and then you will take remainder three so what will be the answer answer will be the one okay uh, can yeah. let's see do you understand the remainder operator uh, let me check 
नाइनटीन रिमाइंडर थ्री इज इक्वल टू वर्ड एंड प्लीज आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन वेरी क्विकली नाइनटीन रिमाइंडर थ्री इज इक्वल टू वर्ड वन 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 ओके so you understand how it works okay uh, one more check one more check zero remainder 9 is equal to zero remainder 9 is equal to what now this what is the answer oh sorry i have given to this only priyam uh, everyone in the meeting Zero, remainder nine. Yes. What will be the answer? The students, please be on time. This is nine seven, and still you are coming to class. Okay, that's cool. So you all are aware how this remainder operator works. So that's cool. So we can proceed. Okay. So here you can see now. Previously, what was the thing? that your counter was n equal to 0 and then this was like this and then what we have to do uh, we are having a counter also and suppose counter initially was 0 then counter equal to 0 now we have to increase the counter value counter plus plus right so now what will be the value of counter counter is 1 now what is counter as i explained you earlier uh, let's see in the previous diagram that we have study let's we have a buffer uh, this is the buffer area let me write it like this is <clears throat> our buffer and suppose we are having a queue like this something and uh, this is uh, something like this okay now what we are having this is not very cool let's have something like this what i have chosen okay, students please be on time otherwise i have to let you in number of times something like this okay Hmm. Okay, so uh, here is what this is zero index. This is one index, and this is two index, right? Now here you can see that in uh, these zero, one, two are what? These are in counter. I am writing here. This is in counter. I am taking this. Uh, this is denoting your zero, one, two. Okay. Uh, just be with me you will understand each and everything i am explaining you to understand this and visualize how these things are working now what is in counter in counter is this index 0 1 2 right think of it as a circular queue and we are having this buffer area now uh, what is counter and this is uh, your yeah we will use a shared counter variable this counter variable will be taken care by whom here is your producer here is your producer and here is your consumer so what i explain you in previous class whenever a producer is going to produce an item whenever a producer going to produce an item and place it into this buffer area and place it into the 
buffer area. Suppose producer produce item one and place it into item in this zero area. Means buffer zero here. You they have placed item one, right? So item one is produced by the producer with this code. You can see here that initially in value is zero and buffer size was three. This is the buffer size, and then we are putting an item into the buffer in. That is in is zero. So in zeroth index we have placed item one. Now we have increased the counter. What is the next value of item is one. In is counter is one, so we can place item here, and then we increase the counter plus plus. That is, uh, initially counter was zero, right? Now initially counter was what? Uh, zero. So initially counter was zero, right? So initially counter was zero. So there was no item, but after producing one item and placing into the buffer area, now what will we do? We will increase the counter, and this will give the signal to consumer that there is an item is produced and put it into the buffer. Now what will be the next value? Uh, so this will be placed by your counter plus plus. So what will be the next value? That is one. Now counter value is one, and you do you have remember that code? What we have told you that if your what was the code? If your counter is equal to zero, right? Then you have to do nothing. No, <clears throat> do nothing. You cannot do anything, right? So do nothing. If counter equal to zero, then do nothing, right? Uh, and uh, we we will not use if we will use while because uh, until and unless uh, while counter is equal to zero, right? Uh, so we cannot do anything. So we will use one infinite loop here. Uh, this is what we have put only semicolon here means uh, nothing statements are there in this while loop. Means it will go in busy waiting. That is, it is just checking is counter value is increased or not. Until and unless counter value is increased, this condition will not be uh, false. And when uh, this condition false, only then you will out of this area. So here you can see here that here while counter equal um, this one was the code for producer, and this one was the code for consumer. Here you can see that while counter equal to zero, you cannot do anything, right? Similarly, here in producer, uh, st students, please be on time. Otherwise, I have to just make you in into the classroom now and then. So, uh, what we are doing here, like uh, in producer, also we have a code that while your counter if your counter value is equal to what your buffer size if your counter value is equal to buffer size then uh, you cannot do anything right then you cannot do anything if something like this then also you cannot do anything right so this is the condition of busy waiting that you have to just wait whenever buffer size is uh, buffer size is fixed whenever counter value is decreased. Now what will happen in this consumer area? Now consumer will consume the item from this area. Consumer will take this item and consume it here, right? Now how it will going to consume the item? Uh, let's have a code of consumer here also. Now, uh, here we will use an out variable, and initially it was zero, and counter, you are aware, value of counter, and then we will use what? We will consume one item. Uh, we will consume one item. How we will consume an item? Let's see. Uh, here you can see if you will take item from the buffer area and consume it and then increase the counter of out and then reduce the counter value. So let's see uh, here you have to consume the item from the buffer area. Now you have taken the item from where buffer zero 
as you can see here that in buffer zero item one was placed so you take the took the item from buffer zero and place it into the item and consume it consume it consume item now you have consumed the item and then what you have to do what you have to do there you have to in you make the counter zero plus one so that you can check if there is an item in there also remainder your maximum size then the out value is one and then we have to decrease the counter counter minus minus now here you can see that this is a shared counter that is used by the producer also uh, that is used by the producer also and this counter value uh, you can see here that this counter value this counter value is used by your producer also and consumer also here you are using your producer and your consumer producer and consumer are using this shared counter variable now producer has increased the counter by one whenever it has produced one item and consumer is consuming the item by decreasing the counter so that it gives the signal that one item has been consumed by the consumer now what will be the next value it is zero right so here you can see that this is the code firstly uh, you can see that if a while counter if buffer size is equal to counter you can producer will not produce any item but if it is not so counter value is less than buffer size then we will produce one item and place it into the circular queue and then increase the counter of that uh, buffer and then this is the counter of buffer area that will signal this is a shared counter value that is used by both producer and consumers it will give the signal to consumer that item has been produced now cons what consumer will do it will check if counter equal to zero it has to do nothing uh, here you un better understand that there is a semicolon is placed so this is a kind of infinite loop till this condition is true if this condition is false only then rest of the statements will be executed these statements are independent and this while loop has no control on these statements because these statements are not under the while loop as you can see there are no curly braces of while loop and this works as a single statement only now to consume the item you will take the item from the buffer consume it increase the counter of that out that will go for looking for next item and then you will decrease the counter value so in this way uh, we can see here uh, now here you can see understand that uh, we are in very pretty much interesting position that uh, we have solved the problem of producer consumer right that we are having a shared buffer area a producer is producing one item suppose uh, it has pl placed one item one here and then the same code will be run and we will uh, can place an item two here also in next in next turn it will increase item two and then it will increase item three now if your count now counter is raised to three so if counter equal to buffer size then it will not produce more item now consumer is consuming item and uh, parallelly it is decreasing the counter value and it is this counter value is checked by producer also every time and whenever it sees that it is consumed by the consumer then it will produce the item so are we good with this that how these uh, concurrent things are working how they are synchronized uh, is the solution is good that uh, we can synchronize in this manner and uh, one thing you can understand that what happened that your solution of this problem totally depends upon this counter variable now uh, your this uh, solution totally depend upon this uh, shared counter variable right yes or no uh, yes or no so the crux of this uh, solution is this common counter variable because with the help of this counter variable only uh, your producer can find out that buffer is empty or not 
and with the help of this counter only consumer understand that buffer is empty or not right so if what may be the problem arises in this uh, solution of the problem suppose your counter variable value is not up to the mark means it is compromised how it is compromised this counter variable let's see how this counter variable can give you incorrect value and suppose if this counter value give you incorrect value then what will happen this with the help of this counter value only producer is able to understand that buffer is empty or not right suppose a counter value is what two now producer is understanding that buffer is full right but the thing is in actual counter value must have to be zero but it is showing counter value as two and it is giving impression to producer that right, buffer is full so producer is doing nothing so if the value in the counter is incorrect then the solution of this producer consumer problem is also incorrect so let's see how this counter value can be incorrect so this is the uh, understanding of this producer consumer problem now let's see what is the problem with this producer consumer solution so we'll first start analysis of this code when executing concurrently the value of counter may be incorrect how the value of a counter may be incorrect let's see the statement counter plus plus as you know that counter plus plus you can increase it by plus one value so it, how it can be implemented in a machine how this counter plus plus is implemented you can see here that in a registers as you have seen that that whenever you are placing this counter is what your memory area any container value uh, which is holding the value of counter now counter value is placed into the register when registers are your hardwares where you actually store values now con consumer is putting counter value is putting into the register one and then hardware is increasing its value by plus one and then you put it into the counter so these uh, three activities are done and can anyone tell me this is equal operator or assignment operator uh, which operator is here is used in these statements is this uh, equal operator or assignment operator are we checking equality here or we are doing assignment yeah very good this is an assignment operator now uh, what is the object you of assignment operator assignment operator job is place copy the right hand side value into the left hand side container right so what assignment operator will do it will take the value of counter and place it into the register one and then in the next statement the register one value is added plus one now that will what will be the next value of register one uh, that is if initial value of counter is zero then the updated value of register one is one now that register one is placed into the counter once again similarly what happened with counter minus minus and uh, this is the case also we are having another register register two and we are placing counter value into register two and then we are decreasing register value and then again we are placing that hardware value into the your memory area which is you are using with the shared memory that is into the buffer so let's see what happen with these things suppose initial value of counter is 5 uh, this is counter suppose initial value of counter is 5 now this first statement is produced by the producer and this is it is executing this statement counter is value is placed into the register one so what is the value in register one it is 5 right now in next statement you can see producer is executing another statement what register one equal to register one plus one now what happen what is the updated value of register one this is 6 now now what happen consumer comes into the picture as you can understand that these are the concurrent process but uh they can execute their statement only one by one so but they can jumble up they can comes up at any time whenever uh, they have get the chance to execute so now uh, with that third statement is not executed by the producer before that consumer comes into the picture and it is it has taken the value of counter into register 2 now what is the value of counter 
we have not updated till now value of counter so the initial value of counter was five only now register two will take old value of old how can we say old this is the original value of counter so what is the next value of register two that is five now again consumer has consumed this updated uh, statement that is register two equal to register minus one so what is the next value of register updated value of register two that is four here you can see till now uh, there is no assignment of updated value into the counter now both producer and consumer has executed their two statements to update the counter value one is uh, adding plus one and one is decreasing one now let's see and uh, this uh, fourth transaction what happened here uh, producer is executing this statement that is assigning register one value into counter so what is the previous value of register one that is six so six will be assigned to this counter now you can see next statement now consumer comes into the picture execute this statement and it is assigning register two value into the counter now what is the value of register two that is four now what is the last value of this counter this is four only but this is not correct right and suppose if we switch this statement suppose this consumer process execute first and then this producer process then what will be the next updated value of counter that is six now if your output depends upon the sequence of statements then there is a race condition what is the race condition means which comes first uh, that will be the winner so here uh, you can see here that after producer consumer is coming so he is the winner and uh, updated value is four but this is the wrong value notice that we have arrived at the incorrect state counter equal to four indicating that four buffers are full when in fact five buffers are full as you can see here initially we are started with five and it is saying that four buffers are full now here suppose if we reverse the order of the statement at t4 and t5 we would arrive at the incorrect state counter equal to six so here you can understand that with when we are executing the processes concurrently then that final value of counter may be wrong because these processes are uh, running concurrently so what happened then we would arrive at this incorrect state because we allowed both the process to manipulate the variable counter concurrently a situation like this where several processes access and manipulate the same data concurrently and the outcome of the execution depends upon the particular order in which the access take place is called race condition so you understand the race condition where you have seen this race condition earlier uh, you have studied digital electronics right in your last year digital electronics yes or no have you studied digital electronics yes so where you in which scenario you have seen this race condition where you have seen a race condition previously give me the scenario this race condition you must have studied in your digital electronics what was the scenario where you are using this race condition do you remember do you remember race condition okay i am giving you one hand uh, do you remember flip flops do you remember flip flops yes aparna very good uh, shreyash asutosh uh, can anyone give one specific uh, example of race condition in flip flop anyone can unmute yourself and just quickly give the situation in the flip flops where we are getting this race condition come on come on come on anyone 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 can unmute yourself and just give me the situation in flip flops where we are getting race condition actually i want this example so that you better understand what is a race condition come on anyone anyone yes asutosh can you explain race condition in flip flops asutosh are you there asutosh beta 
ये सर जब कंडीशन में जब आर एस अब लॉजिकल वन वन हो जाते हैं तो वहाँ रेस कंडीशन हो जाती है जाके टॉगल की जिसे बोलते हैं तो उसको अवॉइड करने के लिए हम लोग लैचेस का यूज करते हैं फिर हम लोग Yes. So the thing is, what is the race condition? Whenever both R and S are going to one, right? Means both are yeah. racing against each other. That I I will go first. I will go first, right? These kind of things. This is called a race condition. Means your output depends upon the sequence of those statements. So, but it, when this race condition happen, their output may be differ, right? Because R is going. Having some value and S is having some value. Now, if both are competing in that, I will come first. Then I will come first. Then wh whoever will come first, that may be an incorrect value. So this is what is happening here. And producer is saying that counter value is this one. Consumer is saying counter value is this one. Now, what is the correct value of counter? And it depends upon the sequence of statement how they are executing. As we can see, there are T4 and T5. Uh, firstly, T4 executed, then T5. Then we are having a different output. If T5 is executing first and T4, then we are having a different output. So this is the problem with this producer-consumer problem. And uh, so, as you can see, that solution totally depends upon this common variable only. That is counter value. So, and if this issue is arises, why? Because both producer and consumer trying to update that counter value at a time only. That, then only we are having this problem. So, in next class we will discuss a critical section problem. What is a critical section? Critical section is the that code area of your program where you are updating a common variable which is shared by other processes also. So, if in critical section problem. what we will find out we will firstly we find out what is the critical section code okay here we are updating this com common counter variable with second process also so what we will do there we will stop them uh, we will request them that we are executing our critical section means we are updating our counter value so please wait uh, for a while let me uh, execute all these three statements and then you will come and uh, update whatever you want to update so this is the only thing we can do to avoid this uh, problem in this producer consumer so to guard against the race condition above we need to ensure that only one process at a time can be manipulating the variable counter this is a very common sense solution you cannot update a common variable at a time by both the processes because we, we there is a data inconsistency because one is um, adding plus one and one is um, subtracting one so we we may be get a different solution so how we can guard we can uh, request other process please wait till i update this counter variable execute all my three statement then you can come then you, your turn will come then you can update this counter variable so to make such a guarantee we require that the process be synchronized in some way so in next class we will find out critical section what is a critical section i have give a glimpse that critical section is that area where we are updating a common variable uh, so once we are done with this then uh, we can see how we can solve this uh, shared common variable so that we can have a consistent result so are we good with this producer consumer issue uh, that i have explain you that you can i uh, Uh, understand better that we are having this buffer area that is shared memory area this buffer is what this is shared memory area and uh, by wh whom it is sharing producer is sharing this memory area and consumer is also sharing this area right so uh, you have seen the code that here we are having an in local variable that is a counter for uh, picking the value putting the value into this buffer area and then what is the maximum size of buffer that is your 3 with this help we can see here that producer is updating the counter and putting the item into the buffer area consumer is consuming the item and decreasing the counter and giving the signal to produce suppose if your counter value is um, raised to this uh, maximum value so producer will not produce an item and if this area is zero then counter consumer will not 
do anything means it will wait till there is an item into the buffer. So are we good with this? Do you understand this producer consumer problem? Uh, that uh, both P processes producer and consumer are competing to each other. They wants to update, but uh, what happened that both processes are running concurrently. That is why uh, there is an issue with the counter and counter is the backbone of this solution. So if counter is compromised, then our solution is compromised. So in next class, we will see that how we can protect this common counter variable.